昭和12年7月7日北京郊外露光橋で夜間演習中の日本軍と中国軍が衝突日中戦争が始まりました So I've been asked the following question What is one of your favorite historical blunders? Well, there are a lot of historical blunders out there, from the Russian Baltic Fleet to Special Order 191. A lot of our history is created out of the aftermath of crucial mistakes. However, there is one historical blunder that's so embarrassing and ridiculous that it's hard to not talk about it. And it was that blunder that led to the beginning of the Second World War, one of the worst wars in human history. Now, before I talk about the blunder that led to World War II, I should mention what I mean by the beginning of World War II. There are around four different dates that are thrown around regarding when World War II begins 1933, 1937, 1939, and 1941. The general consensus is 1939 because that's when the conflict begins in Europe. However, World War II was indeed a world war, and we can't just ignore the war between China and Japan that was raging as part of World War II. China and Japan had been at war for a few years before Germany invaded Poland, with the main Japanese offensives in China beginning in 1937. However, hostilities actually popped up in 1933 with various attempts for peace being made up until 1937, with some of these attempts actually having limited success. 1941 is also used as a date for the beginning of World War II, as it marks American entry into the war, and it sort of was the United States who really bridged the war in Asia with the war in Europe. Making it a truly world war. However, in my opinion, starting your study of World War II at 1941 would leave out a lot of the important context that happened in the preceding years. For the purpose of this video, we will be using the 1937 date as the beginning of World War II, and we'll be looking at the immediate spark that led to Japan launching the initial offensives into China that year. Offensives that would accumulate into a full on war that would not end until Japanese surrender in 1945. Now, in taking a look at this origin, I will really only be looking at the spark of the conflict, and not the decades upon decades of tension that led up to what would be called the Second Sino Japanese War. So make note that the conflict between the two states did not solely originate from the spark. So, what was the spark of the conflict? Well, that would be the Marco Polo Bridge incident. The Marco Polo Bridge is an incredibly old bridge, with the original iteration beginning construction in 1189 CE, the same year the Third Crusade began in the Western world. Of course, this was well before Marco Polo's time. The bridge's name in Chinese is the Lu Go Chiao. In the 13th century CE, the Venetian explorer Marco Polo arrived at the bridge in Beijing and wrote about the bridge's beauty and remarked the following. Over this river, there is a very fine stone bridge, so fine indeed that it has very few equals in the world. It was the fondness Marco Polo expressed for this bridge that led to the Western world referring to it as Marco Polo Bridge. Fast forward to 1937 CE, the 7th of July, around 11 o'clock p.m. In between the explorations of Marco Polo and the night of the Marco Polo Bridge incident, it is understandable that China had undergone quite a history. China had lost war after war and had signed humiliating treaty after humiliating treaty at the hands of other nations, including not only the nations of Europe, but with Japan as well. As part of these treaties, foreign nations were allowed to station troops within China, including China's capital of Beijing itself. One of these foreign armies that were legally allowed to station troops was the Imperial Japanese Army, which had around 7,000 to 15,000 troops within northern China at this time period. This was much larger than the treaties between China and Japan actually allowed, and it was an excessive number if we take into account that the United Kingdom had an estimated 1,007 soldiers, and France had around 1,900. As for the largest number estimated of the Japanese troops, 15,000 soldiers is around the amount of soldiers the United States had stationed in Afghanistan in November of 2017. So, back to 11 o'clock p.m. It was around this time when an Imperial Japanese Army battalion left their barracks for some training exercises, marching near the walled town of Wanping to train. As the troops are training, their commanding officer had some orders he needed to be sent via messenger. The individual who was tasked with this assignment was a man named Private Shimura Kikujiro, and so Shimura left to deliver his orders. After Shimura left, We have our first incident in the form of shots being fired. According to Japanese reports, the Japanese heard that they were taking fire and presumed it to be from the town of Wamping. After being shot at, or at least believing to be shot at, the Japanese ended their training exercises and marched back to the barracks. It was there that they took roll and realized that Private Shimura Kikujiro was still missing. 
The commanding officer took the position that not only had the Chinese opened fire on them, but they had kidnapped their messenger as well. A proud man, the officer ordered the troops to move out to Wanping with the demands to search the city for Private Shimura. The 8th of July, 1937, 12 o'clock a.m. At around midnight, the IJA battalion arrived outside Wanping, stationing themselves on the Marco Polo Bridge. The Japanese demanded that the town's walls be opened for a Japanese investigation to find Private Shimura, who they believed the Chinese were keeping captive. According to the Chinese, however, they believed or claimed to believe that the Japanese were making up the claims that they were shot at. Some historians actually believe the initial shots fired were accidental, though we still don't know who fired the shots. In addition, the Chinese clearly did not have Private Shimura, and believed this to be a Japanese ploy to gain access into the town. The Chinese rejected the Japanese demand of entry. This led to a back and forth of untrusting negotiations as the Japanese claimed that Wanping denying the battalion entry was suspicious. Fed up, the Japanese accused Wanping of kidnapping their soldier and ended negotiations, and prepared to attack the village. 8th of July 1937, 1 o'clock AM. It was at this point in time in which Private Shimura Kikujiro returned to the battalion. So, okay, then where has he been all this time? Well, let's rewind and tell the story from Private Shimura's perspective. Private Shimura delivered his orders by foot, and afterwards he decided he needed to use the bathroom. Specifically, it appears he wanted to use a toilet, which is interesting given the fact that while there were toilets in Japan at the time, they weren't really widespread, especially in rural areas, though I can't seem to find Shimura's place of origin. I don't know if he came from a more urban area, which would more likely have toilets. However, the surrounding area in China where the battalion was stationed did not really have any toilets, so after his long and vain search for a toilet, he finally had to relieve himself out in nature. Private Shimura then returned to where the battalion was supposed to be training, but they had already left the training field due to shots being fired. Shimura then went back to the barracks, where the battalion had already left to go out to Wanping to demand the town be open for investigation. Finally, at 1 o'clock a.m., Private Shimura returned to the battalion outside Wanping and explained his whereabouts to his commanding officer. The commanding officer found himself in a tough position. The whole reason he wanted to investigate Wanping was right in front of him and not in Wanping at all. However, the officer reasoned that since he was already calling in for reinforcements and had already given the order to prepare for attack since he believed the town still opened fire on the unit anyway, he decided to carry through with the attack. At 5.30 a.m., the IJA launched artillery strikes on Wanping, beginning the hostilities of the Marco Polo Bridge incident. It was this incident that caused the Japanese government in Tokyo to support military action which led to more and more troops being deployed into China, and soon, the Second Sino-Japanese War, the first front of World War II, was in full swing. And there you have it, that's how a bathroom break led to the beginning of World War II. Uh, I appreciate that you came and stopped by this episode of Primus Academy. Let me know your thoughts on the video, the style, the concept of Primus Academy below, and yeah, stay tuned for future videos.